What's up guys, the Red Eye Trucker here, back with another video. And as you all can see behind me, we've got some steel coils to haul today. Let's get into it. All right guys, as I said, we have some steel coils that we're trying to haul today. And that's not really out of the ordinary. I've had steel coils before. But for this set of coils, we're actually doing a double pickup. So I'm picking up here. <clears throat> and we are in Lebanon, Pennsylvania right now. But we have to pick up something else along the way that's going with this. It's actually uh, pretty far away, actually. The, the next pickup location for this load is in Howe, Indiana, and that is nine hours away. Yeah, you heard me, nine hours away for the secondary portion of this pickup. And then after that, we are gonna be going to, uh, I believe, uh, Prairie Landing, I think, Prairie Landing, Minnesota. Let me double check, I don't wanna misquote that, but it is in Minnesota. Okay, no, Long Prairie. Long Prairie, Minnesota, that's where we're going. And I'm not exactly sure yet how far that is from Howe, Indiana. And uh, today's a Monday, so we're not getting to our secondary pickup today. We'll get there sometime tomorrow morning and uh, the entirety of the load, first pickup and secondary pickup, is due on Wednesday. So we got plenty of time to get it done. <clears throat> the only thing we need to be focused on once we get secured and everything is just finding ourselves adequate parking for the night uh, For tonight and Tuesday night because the consignee That we're delivering all of this to does not have on-site parking So I don't go up to Minnesota very frequently. I've only been up there a handful of times since I've been with the company So we'll figure something out when we get up there though, but as for these coils As you can see well, we have a skid here of uh, some kind of uh, material. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, yeah, that weighs about a thousand pounds. But we have each of these skids here. Of, I'm not skids, I'm sorry, but coils. We have four coils and each of them weighs between 8,800 and 9,200 pounds. So they're all going to require two chains each so I'll have a chain pulling forward and a chain pulling backward on each of these and I spaced them apart like this as you can see uh, to give myself some space because with the chains I need to have enough distance between the coils so that I don't use up all of my pockets here you know and not be able to properly space these chains apart that in addition to a uh, uh, distributing the weight, uh, this load in total is going to be about 35,725 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> That's what the BOL said, at least. You can take that with a grain of salt. Most of the time, that'll be um, accurate if they put it on the BOL, but you always want to get that cat scale just to make sure you know what you got. But I don't know how much the secondary pickup is going to weigh. I don't even know what the secondary pickup is. If it's another coil or if it'll be another skid like I have here, I don't know. So I spaced this apart just in case I get another coil so like I can put that last coil in the back and not be overweight on any of my axles. Uh, if I do pick up another coil, I can only pick up just one if it ends up being a coil because I only have one set of coil racks left and the set of course is two so i only i used up eight of my coil racks for these four coils that i have on here right now so if i get another one i'll use my last set of coil racks right back here most likely because the trailer axles can hold the most weight uh, forty thousand pounds compared to the drive axles which is thirty four thousand and uh the steers which i believe is uh twelve thousand 500 uh, I'll double check on that I think that's correct but 
I'll make sure on that and I'll reference it in the video just in case <laughs> in case I'm wrong but uh <clears throat> yeah this is gonna be pretty simple pretty simple so it'll be two chains on all four of these coils and I'm gonna put two straps with some edge protectors on this pallet with an X strap on the front of it and I know this is not gonna be crazy heavy but I put forward movement protection on all of my loads uh, where I'm able to regardless of how small they may be because I don't want the freight coming forward so let's go ahead and knock this out because that long nine hour drive is going to have me going into the evening uh, probably sometime around 10 or 11 uh, because of what time it is right now let's go ahead and stop wasting time and get this stuff locked down I'm gonna start off with the forward movement protection like we always do so we're gonna take care of this skid first part of it out of the way the forward movement protection on this skid you got coverage it's not very heavy but still you want to just make sure that if I had to stop short you know all that plastic and whatever is in those containers doesn't come spilling out coming forward referring back to what I was telling you guys about the the axle weight limits uh, it was correct that it's 40,000 pounds max for your rear axles here, the trailer, 34,000 for your drive axles. But I said 12,500 for the steer axles, that's incorrect. It's 13,200, all right? Just keep that in mind. But uh, this load here shouldn't be anywhere near the max for what all this is. As I told you guys, each one of these coils weighs between 8,800 and 9,200 pounds. So we've got all our strapping out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and throw our chains, two chains to reach one of these. And I think I'm also going to throw a strap over top of each of these after I put the two chains uh, through the front and the back or pulling towards the front and the back. So let's go ahead and Get that taken care of this is really easy to deal with and also this uh this load has to be tarped so i think that we might be able to cover this entire load with just one steel tarp i think uh hopefully so let's find out
we need to put edge protectors underneath every one of these chains because load claims are not cool so make sure you do that even though there's a little bit of a protective covering over some of these coils i wouldn't trust that because this is just plastic you know you want to use metal for using chains because this these chains will dig right into this so always use your metal edge protectors when you're dealing with steel Make sure you take this excess chain and wrap it around. You don't want that mess swinging around when you're driving. You can also take a bungee and hook it up to a piece of the or a link of the chain here and then tether that off onto one of the pockets to keep this from moving around if you if you care to do that. There's not a whole lot of excess. I don't think that's gonna happen with this one, but that's just an option that you have when you're doing this. off of that when you're tethering these down <clears throat> you make sure that you're keeping an eye on see like i was just tethering that one and the chain moved and it came off of my edge protector on one side so make sure you are careful fortunately there wasn't enough wasn't enough torque on that to do any damage so i could easily just put it back where it needs to be Put this excess or excess here. I hook it onto itself and then you just wrap. I like to wrap it around because there's so much. There we go. And that keeps it from coming out of place. Last one. Before we go ahead and throw some straps. Excess chain. All right. And when you're doing these guys, you always want to make sure that you check your work before you move to the next step. So I just tightened all these chains, wrapped up the excess chain. So I want to make sure that I have my edge protectors in place and none of them have moved on me while I was winching them down and I didn't notice. So I'm gonna make sure that chain is on top of edge protector on both sides. So passenger side and the driver's side of all these chains. Like I said, I do this before I move on to the next step just to make sure that I don't absentmindedly go through the process of securing all this stuff and then miss something that would cause me to have to undo all the work that I just did to complete a portion of it. You know, that is extremely annoying when you have to do something like that. So just take your time, get it done correctly the first time, or at least uh, check yourself soon enough so that if you did miss a step or something came out of place, you can fix it before you have to cost yourself, you know, an extra 15 or 20 minutes of work on something that you missed. So. We've got our chains, edge protectors, chain binders. Now we need to go ahead and throw straps or a strap over every single coil from the passenger side to the driver's side or whichever way you want to do it. And we're going to alternate those just like we would anything else. Let's go ahead and knock those out. To get on the road for our nine hour drive to go pick up the last bit of this stuff. Then we'll go ahead and head to Minnesota to deliver for Wednesday. the strap like I always tell you guys so that you can use it to protect your rail or 
rather protect the strap from the rail so you don't cut through you use this wrapped up portion of the strap put it behind itself then you can tighten it down and winch it what i'm going to do the edge of these coils is not sharp but i'm slightly concerned about as i'm driving down the highway with uh, the vibration even if this strap is winched down tightly i'm slightly concerned that this these straps might try to work themselves forward or backward somehow so i'm going to make sure that i put edge protectors up here to give them a stable base to sit on i'm going to put some plastic edge protectors up there and that should make sure that they do not slide because you can see these coils are rounded so I want to give them something flat and stable to sit on so that they stay where I want them to. And the wind is working against me a little bit. I'm trying to blow these straps around. And knock them off of these coils. I want to try to work a little bit, a little bit quicker. Hold these down. Wind knocks them off. I have to climb back up here on this trailer uh, and put them back into place. Let's go ahead and very 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 tight all right so now we gotta tighten down the straps that are holding these uh, plastic containers down on this skid now this is something that you don't want to winch your straps down on it too tightly because you'll break this plastic uh, the containers and you might spill whatever is inside so you, you want to have it tight enough uh, I'd say like have it snug and then do like one click pass snug. You don't want to hear anything start cracking and crunching breaking. All right, so you want to get it just tight enough to hold it still because as you guys can see this uh, or as I mentioned earlier, this is like only a thousand pounds of the skid. So it's not going to be that heavy uh, by flat bedding standards. So we're just going to tighten it down enough so that it'll stay still, won't move at all and we'll be fine. Right, guys before I go ahead and throw this tarp on I'll give you guys a 360 view of the completed securement just so you guys can see how it looks Uh, rolled out but we unfortunately are not going to be able to cover all of this with just one tarp I'm gonna have to use another one to cover this little bit right there <laughs> yeah that what can't be any more than uh, maybe a foot 
maybe a foot of uh, free space where the tarp would not be covering this. Now, I know guys, some of you might be tempted to cut corners and just lay that single tarp out and just run it, you know, but if any way, if for any reason this gets wet, you know, you can have a load claim and your consignee can refuse this load here because it explicitly says that the freight must remain dry. And if you're supposed to be tarping your load, you're supposed to be making sure <laughs> that it is completely tarped, not partially tarped. So I'm gonna have to get another tarp out or uh, find a, a partial tarp that I might have and cover that uh, that free, uh, that uncovered bit there. But uh, that's not too much of a headache. But just keep that in mind, guys. Don't don't cut corners, you know, especially not when uh, the penalty for doing so, you know, if it doesn't work out in your favor, will be so steep. <laughs> you know, this load pays pretty well. And if I get it all the way to the consignee where it needs to be delivered and it's wet, it doesn't matter that I drove it all the way there. It doesn't matter that it was properly secured. If it's damaged uh, by being wet, you know, that that's it. I don't get paid for that. You know, don't be the kind of guy that gets gets lazy, <laughs> you know, because being lazy or cutting corners, you know, can end up costing you money. And that's the reason why we're all out here anyway. You I mean, you may be passionate about trucking, but, uh, most of us are out here, even if you are passionate about it, you know, you're doing it out here to, to increase your income and, you know, feed your families or take care of yourself. So don't get in your own way of, uh, being successful, especially not over something relatively small like that, you know, just, just do the, go the extra step and do what you need to do. And you don't have to worry about anything down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up and show you guys the fully tarped uh product there and we're gonna get on the road all right guys we completed the tarping and as i said i had to use uh, another tarp here to cover up that uh foot or so of exposed area and that did not take much time that only took you know maybe an extra five minutes to roll that out and now i don't have to worry about any portion of this load getting wet nice and easy and as I said this is a two part pickup so I have to drive nine hours west to get to Howe Indiana to pick up uh, whatever is left over for this shipment I am hoping that it's something very small um, nothing bigger than you know another skid like I have here uh, Maybe something even smaller than that. Hopefully like just a box, you know, something that I can put into the, the truck itself or put in the side box and uh, transport it the rest of the way. Let's close that up. I need to there we go. put a bungee on that. One more piece. But um, yeah, because I don't want to have to undo any of the securement that I have. Uh, I'd rather not have to undo any portion of the tarp either. You know the extra labor involved with that you know i'd have to undo it put whatever extra piece of freight on the trailer and then put all of that back on again so hopefully it'll be something very small um easy to deal with that i won't have to do that but as you can see we are tent tarped so we have our piece of dunnage in the rear with a strap on it i have a four inch strap to cover the entire surface area of this piece of dunnage here and we have the same thing going on in the very front piece of dunnage strap over top of it that way this load is protected from the moisture the wind is not going to be able to creep up underneath the tarp and blow it up because i know i see some guys driving down the road that will just put a strap only and winch the strap down on top of their tarp that's not the ideal way of doing it and uh, i'm pretty sure if you're working with the company that i am right now you know you're supposed to do it this way with the piece of dunnage not just the strap so i'm referencing overall just flat bitters in general not necessarily i'm seeing other company guys doing this but this way is better you know that way it is super tightly sealed and you can see how tight that tarp is in the front right there where that skid is and of course i put a couple of bungees pulling forward 
on the exposed portion of the tarp that way when you're driving down the road you know you don't have the wind getting underneath it and blowing it all around like that okay you do the same thing in the back you don't have to worry about wind blowing underneath it in the rear but that's just to make sure that no water is able to work its way under there and you keep the tarp airtight so you don't have to worry about any air blowing up underneath it and uh got the bungees pulling the tarp taut backwards uh the the front tarp and we are all set to go guys and my hands are filthy from dealing with that thing even though i had gloves on so we're gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit uh make ourselves something to eat before we head out and uh i'm gonna verify verify my trip plan uh to get to where i need to go for this uh last bit of pickup i'm gonna find somewhere to park for the night because i don't have enough hours to get all the way to the next pickup location i have close i have about eight hours and 48 minutes and it takes uh i think right on exactly nine hours to get to the next location but i'm not gonna drive crazy late uh to get there there's no reason to because i don't have to deliver all this stuff until wednesday so it's 3 40 right now so we'll see how far i end up driving maybe around uh 10 30 11 something like that just depends on what the parking area and parking situations are like which i said i'm going to plan that out before i leave so let's go ahead and get this done i will see you guys at the next stage of the pickup guys it's the next day Tuesday afternoon uh, I drove until uh, midnight last night so my clock refreshed um, at 10 and I had a couple hours to drive to get out here um, so this is the secondary portion of the pickup and I just checked in uh, spoke with the forklift operator and he said that I'm supposed to be picking up eight skids from here uh, eight skids of exactly what I'm not sure because they had a few different types of items in there you know this is a this is a roofing uh, warehouse uh, from what the signage is saying uh, so I don't know if I'm gonna be picking that up or something else that they have here because uh, I see they have coils in here as well, but they look like the coils that I had picked up yesterday So I don't think it's going to be that I could be wrong, but I don't think so I was hoping that it was going to be something small, you know, I was just going to be picking up like uh, some boxes something like I could just easily just uh, stow away uh, And not really have to adjust the securement uh, from what I picked up yesterday, but I might have to take some things down. I'm not certain yet. I'll find out once I pull into this uh, loading bay and see what they actually have for us. We're gonna be going into this area right here where this truck is pulling out from. It's not a very big area here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, uh, that guy's dragging something. I'm gonna have to do like a 45 degree backing into one of these spaces right here. Uh, when I need to get out and go back to the road, which is uh, behind those cars there. So yeah, we're gonna be pulling in there and uh, most likely have to untarp uh, what we have here, because I'm assuming they're not gonna want whatever items I'm picking up from here to get wet either, just like the stuff I picked up yesterday. So we will see once we actually get in there what we have and what we're gonna need to do with it. All right guys, so here's what we got. We picked up eight skids of paneling. And fortunately, I properly spaced everything up there when I picked up yesterday's load. And we had just enough space back here to put this paneling. Uh, I believe these panels are 11 feet long and I had uh, between 12 and 13 spare feet on the tail end of this trailer. And I also had uh, extra space or extra weight empty weight available to add this this was a I believe nine thousand uh, nine thousand nine hundred and pounds and some change and uh, the total weight on the trailer or of the truck and trailer before getting this load on it was about sixty eight thousand pounds and some change so 
we we're able to put this on without going overweight on our trailer axles and this is going to be easy to secure i'm just gonna put a belly strap uh, about right here on this one and then i'll throw three straps over the top of it after that uh, with some edge protectors up there and then we gotta go ahead and put our tarp back up i'll probably roll this front tarp back a little bit so that i can put out the rear tarp and then we'll be right back on the road because we have 11 hours to go to get to long prairie minnesota where this is delivering so i'm not gonna hang around too long to get this done I'm probably gonna actually finish securing this off camera because i want to be as quick as i can so i can hurry up and go because i basically have a full work day of driving to go i don't have 11 hours i got like eight hours and some change available on my clock so we're going to be finishing this route off uh the driving part of it tomorrow morning so i need to get up out of here guys <laughs> we'll be getting back on the road just as soon as i get this done all right guys want to show you real quick the finished product of this last little bit before i threw the tarp on you see this is pretty standard there's nothing special about this uh, as far as how to secure these panels so i got three straps over the top and our belly strap right there so that's actually oh no actually no it's just right actually i was about to say there's more straps than i need to have over the top but it's not because this is longer than eight feet it's 11 feet so you need to have at least three straps on it so that's just right and uh i know i told you guys before that you put your belly strap on if you're two tiers or higher but since this stuff is so thin and it's not like as tall as most loads that would require a belly strap uh are I just split it down the middle so there's eight i went up about three tiers and i just put one straight through there and that'll hold it just fine this stuff is really light like i said it's under ten thousand pounds and with our edge protectors of course because uh this paneling is uh relatively soft and if you put too much pressure on it you can break these uh these panels that are here or these pieces of wood so i went down made it snug and like two clicks past snug so that way there's no play in the straps at all and our i checked the securement of what we picked up yesterday all these coils these chains are all still holding perfectly nothing moved nothing is loose so we just got to go ahead and throw our tarp over top of this and we are back out of here guys we made it to the delivery location as you can see we're in a rural area actually it's an Amish community but the problem is the address that I was given was not correct it's actually going to a relative of the individual who I'm delivering to here it's actually uh, I believe his brother so he told me fortunately it's only a couple of miles away so we're gonna go ahead and drive over that way and get this freight where it needs to be I'm a little annoyed by that because the information I was given was not correct, but at least it's not going to cost me uh, a significant amount of time trying to correct it. So let's get moving.
right guys so we got unloaded here it took a while it definitely took a while but uh as you can see it's a little bit different uh, of a delivery destination that i usually go to of course there's no warehouses delivering to a, a farm basically uh, it's a business but it is in rural area of minnesota out here uh, amish community so they do things with a little bit more labor a little bit less machinery out here which that's fine but, but it, like i said it just took a little while uh not so much them unloading it but more so having to put everything away i actually enjoy doing the securement part of coils i think it's pretty uh pretty cool the different ways you can chain it or secure it uh but i absolutely hate i hate having to put everything away when you're taking all your camera down for coils whether you're using straps or chains uh primarily chains though because it's just so much stuff I have to put away the chains the edge protectors uh the ratchet binders i mean it, it's a lot the tarp uh it's, it was just a lot of stuff i mean it, that's that takes so much time but uh we got it done like we always do and uh we got a pre-plan Pre-plan is going to be taking me about uh, two and a half hours uh, west, I believe, west of where I am currently to go pick something else up. But I'll save that for another video, guys. Well, for this to be a, my first two-stop pickup, which isn't that big of a deal, but for me to do that, it went really well. Uh, picked up the first part of this load on Monday, then picked up the last bit on Tuesday. Uh, the paneling that you saw in here, delivered it. Wednesday here uh, everything went very smoothly aside from me being sent to the wrong address originally but even with that it wasn't terrible because it was only uh like I mentioned earlier a couple of miles away from where I originally was but this still that took time you know if I had just been here uh sent here originally uh, so somewhere along the chain administratively that got through the cracks but I adapt and overcome like I always do so don't get frustrated or if you do don't let it deter you for the rest of your day I'm just gonna let that roll off because uh, I made a, a good amount of money off of this load uh, I paid uh, what was it so you guys it paid about twenty three hundred dollars to the truck and I get my percentage out of that so that was pretty good uh anything i can add to this uh, before i go well yeah well, well aside from that with it being like a farm area like you know there's animals running around so you guys might have heard some of the the animals uh the horses neighing or the cows mooing back there which that didn't bother me at all but uh i'm pretty sure i got manure on my hands i mean there's you know little uh road apples you know scattered about or little uh traces of them i'm pretty sure i could definitely smell them so i I washed my hands like three separate times when I got back into the truck and took that sweatshirt off that I was wearing. But uh, that comes with the territory. I don't really have to deal with that too often. And, and really, I guess it doesn't bother me all that much. You know, I'm a, I'm an outdoorsman, you know, in my free time. I like to go fishing and hunting. So dealing with animals and uh, the smells and all that isn't really anything new to me at all. I just uh, made sure to definitely spray everything down in the truck that I was touching along the way. Uh, because I had to move the truck around a couple of times because you saw that they had a, a fixed crane that was coming out of their barn. So I had to scoop the truck forward and backwards when they were taking off uh, uh, various coils or the panels up there. But uh, uh, anything else significant I can add to this before we cut? Uh, well, no, I think that's pretty much it. I don't, really, I don't get to come up to Minnesota too much. You know, I usually hang closer uh to the midwest or the southeast usually unless i'm trying to to run you know and then you can go anywhere if i'm going to stay out on the road for you know two or more weeks but uh i'm i'm satisfied with how everything went like i said made money got to get some different scenery and show you guys you know something that i haven't put up on here yet uh, as far as like you know being unloaded in an amish community where they're doing stuff right on the farm which is pretty cool i think they make horseshoes here i think uh is what what uh, one of the people here was mentioning to me uh, horseshoes and uh something else <laughs> i don't recall but i think i'll knock it out there guys i'll catch you in the next one i appreciate all you guys liking commenting and subscribing on my videos 
uh, let me know or leave in the comments if you have a particular type of video you guys want to see me do or a type of securement and I will make a note to get that done for you guys as soon as I can. But until the next video guys, here at I Drive Your